Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, September 1st, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's a look at what's coming up tonight. Tonight, another cop was shot and killed today in Illinois, sparking a massive manhunt for two suspects. Meanwhile, shocking video is released of a Texas police officer executing a man in cold blood with his hands up. Bro, they just cold blood and shot that. Then, a black activist challenges Obama to denounce Black Lives Matter. I challenge every leader, starting with the president down to myself, to denounce the Black Lives Matter movement. It's a racist movement, racist to the core, and it has only caused more division and more hate among Americans. And ISIS is showing off their new weapons. Hmm, I wonder where those came from. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. Take advantage of this at InfoWarsLife.com. Well, some cell phone video has just been released that appears to show the moment that two Texas deputies gunned down a man who was holding his hands up. Now, this video is important because it contradicts the police's original version of events. Now, this uh, video was obtained by a local news station, and um, this shows the moment that Bexar County Sheriff's deputies were responding to a domestic violence call uh, against 41-year-old Gilbert Flores. It was in the front yard of a home outside of San Antonio, Texas. Flores was suspected of assaulting a woman and infant inside the residence. So, you know, he's no angel here. Now, police said that Flores appeared to have a knife when they arrived and he attempted uh, to resist and fight back. Now, they also, these two deputies also claimed that they tried to use non-lethal force to stop Flores, including tasers and riot shields, uh, but their efforts proved fruitless and that they had to open fire on the man killing him. Well, now the local news station uh, acquired this cell phone video that contradicts that story. Um, it was filmed by a neighbor, and it, it shows clearly that the police tried really little, if anything, to, to employ non-lethal force. Now, when the news station decided to put this vi cell phone video uh, footage out there, the sheriff's office condemned them for sensationalizing this story. They actually posted a message on Facebook denouncing KSAT uh, 12 News for making this footage publicly available, um, you know, calling it unethical and sad. Now, that right there is just insane because this affects us all. This is not just about, you know, hands up, don't shoot, Black Lives Matter. This is about police are putting the, their word, their testimony down, uh, and it's taken as a matter of fact. And it's only because the cell phone footage surfaced that we can see that perhaps that might not be the case. It affects us all. And this is, of course, the reason why you're sort of seeing what's happening uh, in other news. Because this over-militarization and unaccountability is now causing people to actually um, fire back at police. And we're having a story today of another cop being executed in Illinois. This was an Illinois police officer. He was shot and killed today. It sparked a massive manhunt still ongoing for two suspects, one black and one white. They also might be looking for another woman who may have been involved. And now this shooting comes just days after a Harris County, Texas deputy sheriff was executed while he was pumping gas. 
And, you know, obviously we have the case of the two police officers in New York who were executed last year um, while sitting in their patrol car. And this is already causing a lot of people to come out and condemn the anti-cop rhetoric that's sweeping the nation, tying it to the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, Sheriff David Clark actually went on CNN condemning this whole vulgar, vile, and vicious rhetoric that is out there. But, you know, as we've reported, this all this is going to do is cause the police to transform themselves into a small uh, army. And it's going to just even further militarize the police state and cause this whole division divide and conquer. We've got this other sensational video that's been posted there today with an angry white guy in a cowboy hat talking about how thugs life don't matter. Uh, he cocks a pistol and talks about, um, you know, this, you know, that there's there might be another killing in Texas, but it's not going to be what you think and it, to avenge the deputy's death. So he's calling on people now to start taking action, go and buy slingshots so they can throw rocks at, at any um, Black Lives Matter activist cars and things like that. So this is sort of what we predicted was going to happen. We told you this was going to be the case when we found out that Black Lives Matter was being controlled by George Soros. And, you know, we knew it was going to be nothing but divide and conquer, us versus them, war against the cops, because that's what's necessary to create civil unrest. And so you might be saying, well, who is this George Soros? He seems like a nice guy. He funded $33 million to the Black Lives Matter movement. Well, no, actually, George Soros is public enemy number one. Every life matters. And that is why this issue is so important. Black lives matter, white lives matter, all lives matter. How long before Black Lives Matter protesters are chanting George Soros's divide and conquer scheme is what matters? The Washington Times reports liberal billionaire George Soros has built a business empire that dominates across the ocean in Europe while forging a political machine powered by nonprofit foundations that impacts American politics and policy, not unlike what he did with MoveOn.org. In all, Mr. Soros gave at least 33 million in one year to support already established groups that emboldened the grassroots on the ground activists in Ferguson, according to the most recent tax filings of his nonprofit Open Society Foundations. The sad fact is, one of the 30 richest people in the world, not an American civil rights leader, is funding a divide and conquer movement that has disrupted political speeches, places of business, and the real progress Americans have made in the United States regarding race relations. Meanwhile, Soros has fueled the division in Ukraine. George Soros admitting he's behind the open border move and the illegals pouring in, admitting he's behind Ukraine, saying, I did it, which I think he's taking too much credit. He's a big part of it, uh, saying they're part of the Arab Spring and turning loose all these groups. That it, I mean, on every front, George Soros. If it was a racist nation, we would not have had the top guy ahead of law as a black man, Eric Holder, and now Loretta Lynch, another black woman. We would not have the head of the United Nations. It was Susan Rice. You would not have a secretary of state as Condoleezza Rice or, or Colin Powell or others. So let's not call it a racist nation. If you want to point the finger, point it at Obama. Point it at Holder. Point it at that low-life man who never convicted one head of the white shoe boys. Too white for you, Eric? And we are distracted, just as the Cloward Piven strategy would have us. Of course, all lives matter. Of course, chanting pigs in a blanket will lead to execution of police. I don't think chanting uh, or, uh, you know, singing chants that are basically promoting killing police officers is peaceful. And of course, inciting violence for the sake of violence is a trap. I would prefer to be remembered as a part a person who uh, 
was part of this resolution. Kids being born in this country, and we have to leave um, a legacy for them, something for them to, so it'll be easier for them to deal with problems, the issues that come up, you know, just like people that has made a movement towards peace and nonviolence all the way up to this point, you know, we, it's important that we keep that going. Ultimately, the 13 million black babies that Soros supported being wiped out and the 41% welfare spending increase Obama has brought us are the real steps backwards. And those ensnared by the violent elite engineered faux rights movement will eventually find themselves eager participants in a divide and conquer takedown scheme of the American dream funded by the very people responsible for the hostile environment the Black Lives Matter movement is fighting to escape from. All lives matter. That police officer that got killed by that black man because that black man listened to what y'all was saying by going out and killing white people. That police officer life matter. That nine-year-old girl in Ferguson, Missouri that got shot in the head while she was doing all homework in a drive-by shooting that none of y'all protested. Her life mattered. So governments like to split people up, categorize human beings, divide so they can conquer them. There's people that don't even think that they can see the world because they need permission to see the planet, planet Earth. John Baum for Infowars.com. Well, a new undercover video is showing a high-level Clinton campaign staffer accepting foreign donations, knowingly breaking the law. Now, this video is coming out of Project Veritas once again. They catch Molly Barker, who is the director of marketing for Hillary Clinton's national campaign. Uh, she's knowingly breaking campaign finance law by accepting a straw donation from a foreign national contribution from foreign nationals. It's illegal under FEC election law. Now, it seems fairly innocent in this transaction, in this video, um, a Project Veritas action investigator happened to be standing next to a Canadian citizen at the merchandise booth who wanted to buy a T-shirt. Now, this purchase of campaign materials are explicitly treated as contributions under FEC law. They are illegal for foreign nationals or corporations, and they know that Barker was well aware that she would be breaking the law uh, because she consulted with Clinton campaign's compliance manager who reiterated to Barker that she could not accept this contribution. So, um, you know, you might be saying, well, it's just a T-shirt. But the fact is, these FEC, FEC laws were written to prevent foreign money from influencing American elections. And we've seen filmmaker Dinesh D'Souza be taken down over an iffy interpretation of straw donations. So if this is happening at the campaign's very first major national event, knowingly breaking this FEC law, you know, how widespread is this practice throughout the Clinton campaign? Now, we already know, because her emails have been released last night, that Hillary intentionally originated and distributed highly classified information. And it wasn't constrained to just her State Department staff. She also sent classified information to Sidney Blumenthal, who was a former Clinton White House operative that was banned by the Obama White House. Now, in 2009, Obama signed an executive order that states that U.S. officials who negligently disclose classified information to unauthorized individuals are subject to any and all federal sanctions provided for by the law. So will Hillary, will, will we see Hillary for prison in 2016? Now, Larry Nichols was on the Alex Jones show today, and he was talking about how the Clintons have always gamed the system, and that's going to happen here again today. Hillary is going to work her way right out of this email scandal. It's all going to hinge on a thing called the FEMA Provisional Government Plan. Whoever is president when a crisis is declared nationally, when that day comes, whoever's president becomes king. Now, the way that works so people will know, whoever's president takes total power. There is no vice president. Number two is the commander of the Joint Chiefs Staff. All Congress and senators go back to their home states, and they become the government there. Now, what that does is the president, when that happens, becomes king. And the only person that can call the crisis over is the president. And as you know, nobody's going to do that. 